Okay, we're gonna get started on our backs and we'll be there for a little bit. If you have a yoga strap, go ahead and grab one. If you don't, you can also use a belt, a scarf. I used a dog leash when I taught the other day. So anything really works, anything that's long enough to help you reach your leg. All right, thank you. She's gonna be our entertainment. So laying back in a comfortable position, I'm gonna stay seated for a moment just so you can hear me better. But laying back, your knees can be bent or you can take your legs long and just give yourself a moment to settle in. Now it's really hard to practice in your own home. So try to let go of the, the distractions around you. Anyone that lives with you, just try to block them out for now. Ignoring any dust bunnies you see underneath the couch. Giving yourself this time to be on your mat and be present in your body. And with the eyes closed, start to turn inward, scanning through from head to toe. I'm just noticing any places in the body where you're holding on to tension, any areas of soreness. So checking in on any injuries. And listening to your body throughout your practice, as always, letting go of any poses that don't feel right today. And also just checking in on how you're feeling mentally, emotionally. And these are strange times, so it's normal to not feel normal right now. There's a lot of pressure to stay productive, stay active but just being okay with where you are today, being both physical and mental. And start to connect with your breath, deepening and lengthening each inhale and exhale. Breathing any way you'd like here, just being grateful that you can take deep, long breaths. A couple more breaths here. I'm going to join you on your back. Switch my dog out of the way. Poor dog. Okay. And as you inhale, come to a full body stretch, reaching your legs long, your arms up over the head, feeling your spine lengthen. And on your next exhale, start to draw the knees in towards the chest, wrapping the arms around the legs, wherever you can comfortably reach. And just take a moment to rock back and forth a few times, massaging the low back. And we'll keep a hand on each one of our knees, just a gentle touch there. Try to keep your low back pressing into the mat, and we'll take the knees out away from each other, around and back together. So each leg is making its own little circle. And these circles can be small, big, fast, or slow. Just loosening up the hips here a little bit. And the next time your knees come together, start to reverse your circles. Try to keep your low back glued to the floor to protect your spine. And last time around. And keeping our knees bent, we'll release the feet down to the mat, reaching the fingertips towards the heels. We're going to flow through a few rounds of bridge. Really important, especially when you're watching a video, to keep your head and neck really still. I actually hurt my own neck doing teaching bridge via video. So try not to try to resist looking at your screens, look up towards your ceiling here. Reaching the fingertips towards the heels, we'll inhale with our hips down on the mat. As we exhale, we'll press our low back into the mat. Slowly start to peel the hips up towards the ceiling, moving one vertebrae at a time. Inhaling at the top of your bridge. Exhaling, slowly take the hips back down. And we'll flow through about three or four more of those in your own time, moving at your own pace, moving with your breath. If you'd like to switch up the arms, you can bend at the elbows, pressing the triceps into the mat to really ground down through those shoulders, open up through the heart.
One more time through those. And then the next time your hips are down on the mat, let the arms open up wide and let the knees drop from side to side like windshield wipers. One more time each way. And we'll meet with our knees at center and go ahead and grab your strap. As I was saying before, some of y'all joined us. If you don't have a strap, you can use a belt or a, uh, a scarf, dog leash, anything else you have around the house. You can even use the sleeve of a shirt or a pair of jeans. We're gonna draw our right knee in towards the chest. Hook that strap around the arch of the right foot, but instead of taking it up towards the ceiling right away, we're gonna take that leg a little bit lower. So you can even do this without a strap if you'd rather do that today. So my right knee is in line with the left here, so that's a good kind of alignment cue to find the nice level here. We'll inhale here as we exhale, we'll bend to the elbows like you're doing a little bicep curl, and that'll draw the right knee in towards the chest. And then you can control how much resistance you want. You can really pull back onto the strap as you press the foot into the strap. And that'll just make that hamstring, that leg work a little bit harder there. So we're exhaling the knee in towards the chest. Inhale to press the foot into the strap to lengthen back out on that diagonal. You might feel a little work in that right hamstring. You might even feel it on the top of the right leg and the quad. And let's do about two more of those. And the next time you've got the right leg you're too long, now we're going to lift it up and down. So keeping that leg straight, little micro bend in the knee. We'll inhale the right foot up towards the ceiling. Exhale, keeping that leg you're too long. Take it down to a hover, so about a foot off the floor. Inhale to lift back up. Exhale to lower down. Just a couple more of those. Now the next time you've got the right foot reaching up towards the ceiling, we'll hold there for the hamstring stretch. Again, keep a little micro bend in that right knee to protect your hamstring. If you're feeling good here, you can also reach your left leg long. But if that starts to pull on your hip, low back, hamstrings at all, just re-bend through that left leg. And if you're holding onto a strap here, just let your hands slide down towards the ends of the straps. Relax your head and neck down. Again, if you don't have a strap, you can just Interlace your fingers anywhere up the back side of the right leg. Just a few more breaths here. And we're gonna go straight into an IT band release. So if you're using a strap, bring both ends into your left hand. We're going to internally rotate this right leg as much as we can and sickle the right foot so the toes are pointing towards the floor. It's a really small movement to reach the right leg, just slightly over to the left, just across the body. You might feel it opening up the outside of the ankle. You might feel it all the way into the outside of the right hip, into that IT band. If you've been going outside, walking, running, Biking, this is a good one to do after those workouts. Stretch the hamstring, stretch the IT band. And we'll bring that leg back to center. If you took the left leg long like I did, go ahead and re-bend that knee. Taking the strap off the foot, you can just lay it on your stomach or off to the side. We'll bend our right leg and cross our right ankle onto the left knee, letting the right knee fall open. Then we'll take a moment here, if you'd like to bring the hands to the legs, kind of press into the legs. Rock side to side a little bit. Lengthen out the low back. And then you can either stay right here the whole time or start to draw, <laughs> bye Frankie, start to draw the right shin in towards the chest. And then from there you can interlace the hands around the left hamstring. If the hands don't quite reach, you can even thread that strap or whatever you're using around the left hamstring to kind of pull those legs in towards the chest a little bit more. And if you lift it up the left foot, start to bring it back down to your mat or the floor, wherever you are, uncrossing the right leg and grabbing your strap if you've got it. 
We'll draw the left knee in towards the chest, hooking the strap around the arch of the left foot. And we're gonna take that leg low to start. So we're lining up our left knee with the right to get a nice low diagonal there. Inhaling with the leg straight as we exhale, little bicep curl of the arm to draw the left knee in towards the chest. And then as much resistance as you want, pulling back on the strap to lengthen that leg back out. Again, you can do this without a strap, just bending and straightening the leg. A few more of those, just warming up our hamstrings. Okay, last one. And we'll keep the left leg reaching long. Now we'll take it up and down. Inhale the left foot up towards the ceiling. Exhaling, taking that leg down as low as your low back wants you to. You can pause a uh, foot off the floor, take it all the way down to a hover. Inhale to lift, exhaling down. I'm still kind of doing that little bicep curl with the arms as well. Right, last time. Now we'll hold with that left foot reaching up towards the ceiling and keep a little softness behind the left knee. That right knee can stay bent the whole time we're here, or you can reach it long. If you don't have that strap, you can just hold on behind that left leg with the hands. And if you're using your strap, both ends of the strap into the right hand, turning in, oops, I lost my strap, turning in the left leg, sickling that foot, and then to start to reach that leg across the body, just a few inches, breathe into the outside of the left leg. Let's inhale to bring the leg back to center, bending the right knee, taking the strap off the left foot. You can move it out of the way for now. And we'll cross our left ankle onto the right knee, letting the left knee fall open. And if you'd like to take a moment here to press the hands into the legs, rock side to side, lengthen out the low back. Oops, I had to pop my hip into place. All right, you can stay right here or start to draw the left shin in towards the chest. Interlacing the fingers around the hamstring of the right leg. Start to release the right foot down, uncrossing the left leg. Let's draw both knees back in towards the chest. And we'll roll completely over to either side, catch yourself with your hands. And slowly help yourself up to any comfortable seated position. You feel free to sit up on anything you need. Even if you don't have a yoga blanket at home, you can sit up on a, any kind of blanket, pillow, couch cushion, whatever you need. As you get comfortable here, start to roll through your shoulders, letting go of any stress or tension you're holding there. I'm going to close those blinds a little bit more. Keep rolling through your shoulders. Turning into a pretty sunny day. So. Okay, a few more times. Let go of any stress or tension you've been holding there. And relaxing the shoulders down and back. As we inhale, we'll sweep the hands up towards the ceiling. Exhaling, we'll bring the palms together and down through our heart. Moving with your breath, inhale to reach. Exhaling through the heart. A couple more of those in your own time, moving with your breath. Let's all meet with hands at the heart. And this time we'll take it into a twist. Inhale to sweep the hands high. Exhaling, twisting over to the right, letting the hands fall wherever they land. Gentle gaze over the right shoulder if that feels okay in your neck. On our next inhale, we'll sweep our way back through center. We'll keep our right hand reaching high. Left hand releases down towards the floor. 
Try to relax that right shoulder away from your ear as you reach up and over to the left. This left hand can stay close. If you want a deeper side stretch, you can walk that hand out. Just to try to stay rooted down to whatever you're seated on. So if you start to lift off that right hip, just slide that left hand in a little bit closer so you can stay grounded. And as we inhale, right hand pulls us back up to center. We'll inhale both hands high. Exhaling, twisting over to the left, taking a few breaths here, gazing over that left shoulder if that feels okay in your neck. We'll inhale to sweep our way back through center. Left hand stays high this time, right hand releases down. Try to relax that shoulder, staying rooted down as you reach up and over to the right. And that hand can stay close so you can walk it out further. And this time we'll inhale, right hand sweeps up to meet the left. Exhaling hands back down through the heart. And we'll just do a little stretch for our neck here. We'll bring our right hand and rest it on the left shoulder. I'm just trying to keep that left shoulder down and back. And then we'll turn and gaze over the right shoulder. Start to bring the gaze back to center. Now we'll slowly start to tip right ear towards right shoulder. Doesn't have to go far. Start to release that right hand as you tuck the chin in towards the chest. Lifting the head through center, stacking it on top of the spine. We'll bring our left hand onto the right shoulder. Try to keep that right shoulder down and back as we turn and gaze over the left. Bring the gaze back through center. Now slowly tipping left ear towards left shoulder. Tucking the chin in towards the chest, releasing that left hand down, lifting the head back to center, roll through those shoulders again. Think of anything you want to loosen up in those neck releases. All right, we'll be moving forward to hands and knees. So again, if you've got a blanket or something to pad your knees, feel free to bring that along. I'm not using blocks today, but if you happen to have blocks or any big books, I've been recommending Harry Potter. They're nice and tall. If you have those around the house, you can use that. Otherwise, I'll be showing everything without uh, blocks, without a lot of props today. So we're lining up our knees underneath our hips. Our hands are underneath the shoulders. If you're taking care of your wrist today, you can always be on your fist here instead of your wrist. As we inhale, we'll lift our tailbone, pulling the heart forward, lifting the chin through cow. As we exhale, rounding through the spine, tucking the chin into cat. Inhaling forward through cow. Exhaling, rounding into cat. And a few more times through those. Move at your own pace, moving with your breath. Feel free to add in any other movement that feels good on your body today. You can add a wag of the tail. You can tuck the toes and cat. One more time through those. Whenever you feel ready, we'll meet in child's pose. Your knees can stay in line with the hips or they can open up as wide as your mat or wider than the hips. Hands can start to walk forward. If your forehead doesn't quite touch the floor here, you can also stack the fists or stack the hands and rest the forehead on the hands. And whenever you feel ready, we'll meet back up in hands and knees, realigning knees under the hips if you have them wide. We'll tuck our toes and start to lift the hips up and back, finding downward facing dog. Any movement you need in this down dog, bending the knees, pedaling through the feet, lifting high bumps to the toes, whatever you need here. And on your next exhale, take a deep bend in the knees, slowly start to walk the feet towards the hands or the hands toward the feet. Finding a forward fold, 
Keep a nice deep bend in the knees here to start. Try to let your head and neck release down. And then wherever the hands can comfortably rest, they can be on the knees, shins, feet. You can also reach across for opposite elbows and find a little sway side to side. Releasing the elbows if you're holding on, keeping the knees nice and soft. We'll inhale to slide up the legs, lifting halfway up, drawing shoulder blades towards each other. Exhaling, releasing back into our forward fold. As we inhale, we'll sweep the arms out to the side, reverse swan dive your way up to standing. Exhaling, hands down through the heart. All right, we're gonna flow through a nice, gentle vinyasa. If you know different versions, you can add those in. And I'll just say throughout our class today, you can take a vinyasa when you want one, skip them when you don't. And I can't see most of y'all, so do whatever you want. This is your practice. Good time to really figure out what your body needs. So stepping up towards the top of your mat, we'll inhale, sweep the arms high. As we exhale, we'll dive into our forward fold, keeping those knees nice and soft. Inhale to lift halfway up, drawing shoulder blades towards each other. Exhaling deep in the knees, reaching the hands down towards the mat. Stepping the feet back into plank. And plank can be on your hands and toes here. It can also be on your knees. We'll try to lower down in one piece, keeping the core strong, hugging the elbows in towards the ribs. Inhaling the shoulders down away from the ears. Think about lengthening the spine as you lift the heart, either cobra or up dog, whatever's in your practice. Exhaling to release down. We'll press up and back, either child's pose or downward facing dog. So that's our vinyasa. Feel free to do them whenever we have time between poses, or you never have to do one ever again if you don't want to. This is your practice. Take care of you. From our down dogs, let's take a deep bend in the knees, walk, step, or hop your way to the top of your mat. Inhale to lift halfway up. Exhaling, folding forward. Inhaling, sweeping up to standing. Exhaling, hands down through the heart. Right, we're going to make our way back down. We're going to add in a lunge this time. Inhale to sweep the arms high. Exhaling, knees soften as we dive forward. Inhale to lift halfway up. Exhaling, deep into the knees, reaching the hands down towards the mat. This time we'll keep our right foot forward, left foot steps back into a lunge. And then looking down at your right foot, making sure that right ankle is underneath the right knee. Again, if you've got blocks here, you can bring hands onto blocks or books or any pets you have around the house. You can stay up on these left toes or you can lower that left knee down if a lower lunge feels better on your hips. In either one of those poses, you can also climb up onto that right leg. That just gets a little deeper into that left hip flexor. And try to find somewhere still to focus the eyes. That'll help with your balance here. Check in on the shoulders. Try to relax them away from the ears. A couple more breaths here. And if you climb your way up onto that right leg or switch up the arms, start to bring the hands back down to your mat or your blocks. And we'll start to lengthen out our right leg, walking hands back, flexing the right toes back to find a hamstring stretch. And if the floor is too far away from you here, you can also rest the hands gently on that right leg. Or if you're near a chair or a couch, you can bring a hand onto that for some support. We're trying to keep our spine nice and long here, heart open. And that deep stretch through the right hamstring. And as we inhale, we'll re-bend into the right leg, walking the hands forward. And then from here, you can choose your own adventure. Right knee can sweep back to meet the left. Find your child pose. You can also go straight to down dog. Or if you want that movement, you can flow through your vinyasa in your own time. That's when we do plank. Chaturanga to lower down, cobra or up dog, and lifting up and back, downward facing dog or child's pose. And let's all meet up in down dog. Take your time if you were doing some other things there. And as we exhale, we'll take a deep bend in the knees, 
Lock, step or hop your way to the top of your mat. Inhale, we'll slide up the legs, lifting halfway up. Exhale into our forward fold. Our left foot stays forward this time. Right foot steps back, finding your lunge. It can be the same or a different lunge than we did on the first side. And remember all your options. Right knee can stay lifted or lower down. Hands can stay on the mat, or you can climb up onto that left leg. Keep lengthening through the low back. Try to relax the shoulders down and back. Reconnect with your breath. Okay, we'll start to release hands back down if you climbed up. Start to lengthen through that left leg. And keep a little softness in the knee if this is too much on the hamstring today. Hands walking back, resting either on the left leg, blocks, chair, whatever you've got around. Breathing into that left hamstring. On our next inhale, we'll rock forward into our low lunge again. Left knee sweeps back to the right. You can either find your child's pose, down dog, or move through a vinyasa. Let's all eventually meet up in down dog. And we'll take a deep bend in our knees, making your way into your forward fold. Inhale, we'll lift halfway up. Exhaling, folding forward. Inhaling, sweeping up to standing. Exhaling, hands down through the heart. All right, we'll stay standing for a little while here. And we're going to do this little chair flow. If you've taken my class before, you've probably done it with me. It's really good for the shoulders and the low back. And if you're like me and you've been sitting on the couch a lot watching Netflix, <laughs> your hips are probably tightening up, shoulders maybe rounding forward. So this will feel really good, kind of open everything up. So I'll show you the three poses that go into it, and then we'll kind of turn it into a flow in our own time. So first, we'll start with a standing camel. We'll bring the hands either to the low back if you're putting Hands in the back pockets of jeans, but who's wearing jeans right now, right? All about the yoga pants and pajamas these days. So you can either be on your hands or you can come onto your fists here if that feels better. And we're rolling the shoulders down the back, opening up through the heart, drawing elbows, shoulder blades towards each other. You can make that as big of a back bend as you want to today. And then as we exhale, we'll sit into chair. So our feet are in line with the hips. As we sit down into that imaginary chair, the hands can be at the heart, they can rest on the legs, or they can be alongside the head. So looking down, make sure you can still see your toes, make sure those knees are in line there as well. And as we exhale, we'll bring the hands to the top of the legs if they weren't already there, and we'll tuck the chin and round the spine like we're in cat pose, and slowly roll ourselves up to standing one vertebrae at a time. So we're gonna connect those three into a little flow. Inhale to open up through cobra. Exhaling, sitting into chair. Pausing there for an inhale. Exhaling, bring the hands to the legs, around your way up to standing. So feel free to start to move in your own time. If one of these feels better than the other and you need some extra time there, you can take as much time as you want in each pose or move one pose for breath. Or if you want to do something completely different right now, Feel free. I'm just here to guide you. Let's go through that one more time. Really try to articulate through the spine as you roll your way up. And this next time when you roll up to standing, just take a moment there, roll through the shoulders. Take your time if you're still finishing up. All right, we're going to step wide on our mat. I'm going to turn sideways. So toes are facing towards the long end of your mat if you're using one today. The wider the stance, the better. We'll bring the hands to our hips, inhaling the shoulders down the back. As we exhale, we'll start to hinge forward. 
And from here, hands can slide down the legs. You can hold on to any props you've got on the floor, or the hands can come all the way down. Try to let your head and neck relax down here. If you're craving some movement, you can alternate bending the knees, sway side to side. And a couple more breaths here. Evening out the legs if you were swaying. And then we'll meet at stillness at center and check in on the head and neck. Try to relax the jaw, relax the space between your eyes. And as we inhale, we'll slide the hands back up the legs, pressing all the way up to standing and keeping the feet wide. We'll keep the left foot where it is, just pivot the right toes towards the short end of your mat. We'll take a deep bend into the right knee, setting up for warrior two. Right hand reaches forward, left hand reaches back. Energy through the fingertips, but try to relax the shoulders down the back. Maybe turning the gaze down the right hand, if that feels okay in your neck. And let's move a little bit here. As we inhale, we'll lengthen through the right leg. Hands sweep up towards the ceiling, maybe palms come together, if that feels okay in shoulders. We'll exhale to rebend into warrior two. Inhale to lengthen and reach. Exhaling bend. Let's do two more of those. And we'll meet up in our warrior two. Keeping the arms reaching long this time, we'll inhale to lengthen through our right leg. Exhaling, right hand reaches forward, left hand reaches high into triangle. Join the shoulder blades towards each other, staying open through the heart. Whatever gaze works for you here, you can look down towards the right foot, straight forward, or up towards the left hand. As we inhale, left hand pulls us back up, rebending into our right leg. And then from here, we'll reach back, and you can either just clasp opposite elbows, or you can interlace your fingers. You can also grab a strap or a towel here. Just find a nice shoulder opener. Inhale the shoulders down and back. And then you can stay right here or start to tip forward, bringing the chest down towards that right leg or maybe all the way to the inside of that right knee. So again, a nice hip opener, a nice shoulder opener. Use your next inhale to lift you all the way back up to standing, releasing the heart opener you were in. We'll pivot the uh, right toes to match the left. We'll come back into this wide leg forward fold again. Sliding forward, hands down to legs, block, floor. And if you want that movement again, alternate bending the knees, find that little sway. One more breath here. We'll slide the hands up towards the hips, pressing yourself up to standing. And we'll be going to the other side. So you might be facing away from your screen. That's okay, you know what we're gonna do. So we're pivoting our left toes towards the back of the mat. If you'd rather swing yourself around, you can. Taking a deep bend into the left knee, finding your warrior two here. Take a moment to set it up. Our left knee is still stacked over the left ankle. Energy through the fingertips, feeling strong here. And we'll find that flow. Inhale to lengthen the left leg as the arms sweep high. Maybe palms meet, maybe not. Exhaling back into warrior two. Inhale to lengthen and reach. Exhaling bend. Two more of those in your own time. Meeting up in warrior two. We'll inhale to lengthen through our left leg. Exhaling, tipping forward into triangle. Left hand slides down left leg, right hand reaches high, and whatever gaze feels good on your neck here. Inhaling, right hand pulls us back up. Exhaling, rebending into warrior two. Then we'll find that shoulder opener again. Again, you can just be holding on to opposite elbows, grab a towel or interlace the fingers. 
If you interlace the fingers the first time around, try doing the opposite thumb on top, the way that feels funny, your non-habitual clasp there. Inhale the shoulders down the back. Again, you can stay upright the whole time. You're still getting a nice shoulder opener. Or you can start to hinge down towards that right leg, maybe to the inside, or sorry, is that our left, it's our left leg. <laughs> Bring the shoulder to the inside of that left knee. Inhale, brings us back up, releasing the shoulder opener, lengthening out through the left leg, hooking left toes to match the right, and then we'll just walk those feet in towards each other, shake it out, let it go. All right, we're going to balance here for a moment, so if you have something to hold on to, you can move towards a wall or a chair, back of the couch, whatever you need. You can also step off your mat onto a harder surface if that helps your balance. And then we're just going to do tree today. So pick a leg, any leg. I always say I balance on my worst leg first so I feel good about my second side. So if you have a least favorite leg, start to ground out through that leg. And the opposite foot can stay down on the floor. You can slide that foot up to the calf. Or you can help it out up over the knee. I would just avoid pressing directly on that opposite knee. And same thing goes with the arms. They can reach in any direction, holding on to anything you need there. And find somewhere still to focus the eyes. Being patient with yourself. If you fall out of it, just come right back in. And a few more breaths here. Carefully start to release that foot down. Shake it out if you want to. All right, we'll be rooting down through our other leg. And this tree does not have to look the same as the first side. Those toes can stay down the whole time. You can find the same or different expression. Find somewhere still to focus the eyes again. Lots of energy pressing down into your standing leg. Start to release that foot down, let it go. All right, if you stepped away from your mat towards the wall, just go ahead and come back to that mat. And we'll set up for a pyramid. We'll keep our right foot forward, left foot steps back. So the feet are at least in line with the hips here. If you need a wider stance, you can heel toe those feet even wider. But bring the hands to the hip bones. Try to point both hip bones. In the same direction. So if you have little car headlights on your hip bones, they both be pointing in the same direction. We'll inhale to lengthen our spine. As we exhale, we're hinging from the hips. Start to fold forward. And let your right hamstring be your guide here. So if it's telling you to stop, just keep your hands high up on that leg. If you want a deeper hamstring stretch, those hands can walk down to the shin, maybe down to blocks, or all the way down to the floor. And then keep an eye on your low back here. If this left hip started to peel open and your low back is really open, try to shift a little bit more weight into your right leg and that'll flatten things out. We a nice little tabletop there. Find somewhere on the floor to focus the eyes. I usually look at my, my right big toe, find some stillness there. One more breath here. Start to soften through the right knee. We'll slowly climb our way back up to standing. Give yourself a minute if you feel dizzy as you lift. And we'll just swap out the legs. Left foot steps forward, right foot steps back. And nice wide stance as wide as you need to go there. And with the hands on the hips, try to keep those hips nice and square. Right hip is matching the left. Keep that squareness as you hinge forward. And then listening to this leg, and you can stay up high or start to walk the hands down. 
And then shifting a little bit more weight into that left leg to really get that flatness in the low back. Start to soften into the left leg. Slowly climb your way back up to standing. And as you feel ready, right foot steps up to meet the left. Shake out those legs a little bit. And we're going to make our way back down. Inhale to sweep the arms high. Exhaling, knee soften as we dive forward. Inhale to lift halfway up. Exhaling deep into the knees to plant the hands. Your choice. You can vinyasa your way to down dog, or you can just plant the hands and walk the feet back. And if you're flowing through that vinyasa, take your time. And whenever you're ready, let's meet up in down dog. We'll ground down through our left foot. Inhale to lift the right foot off the mat. It can just be barely off in line with the hips, or you can take that like really high, bend the knees, stack the hips, whatever feels good there. And we'll inhale to square the hips. As we exhale, we're going to sweep our right knee up towards the right wrist. We're planting our shin onto our mat or the floor to come into pigeon. Heel tying the left leg long. And then use any props you've got here. If you need to put a pillow or a blanket underneath that right hip, then you can kind of sit on that support, keep the hips nice and square. If your right knee is in agony right now and does not like this pose, you can come onto your back and take that figure four stretch. We did the game of class. And then as we go to the other side, you can just switch out the legs. But if you're staying in pigeon, look back at that left leg and notice if you're rolling onto the inside of that leg. Try to really have that leg straight. Left knee is on that floor. And you can stay up on the hands the whole time or start to drop down to the elbows or the forearms. You can bring your head onto a pillow or a block. And if you drop down to your elbows and you're a pigeon, start to lift back up onto the hands, tucking the left toes and your right foot can go straight to down dog or you can take it high one more time. And if you're on your back, just switch out your legs to your figure four and we'll meet you there in a minute. And let's find the other side. Inhaling our left foot off the mat. Again, any height you want. If you want to take it really high, bend the knees, stack the hips, whatever feels good. We'll inhale, square the hips if you open them up. Exhaling, left knee towards left wrist, planting the shin. Feel toeing right leg long and any props you need, a blanket or a pillow under the left hip. It's always a good idea to really find that squareness. Looking down at your right leg, making sure it's parallel, not turned out or in. And take as much time as you need on the hands or maybe relaxing forward. If you drop down to the arms, carefully help yourself up to the hands and your choice, whatever you need here. If you want to take that left leg high one more time. If you want one last vinyasa, feel free to flow through. If you are on your back, just go ahead and roll your way back to down dog. And we'll all eventually meet up in child's pose. Again, take your time if you're doing some other things there.
Okay, once we're in this child's pose together, we'll inhale with our hands reaching forward. As we exhale, we'll walk both hands over to the right side. Really breathe into the left side of the hips and the low back. Inhaling the hands back to center. Exhaling both hands, walk over to the left side. And start to walk the hands back to center and carefully walking the hands in towards the knees, lifting yourself up to seated. Drop the hips to either side, swing the legs around. I have to bring a clock in here, so I keep checking my phone for our time. All right, we're going to keep our right leg reaching long here. Bend our left knee in. If you have a lot of space between your knee and the floor, you can wedge a blanket, block, or pillow underneath that leg. Flexing the right toes back, bringing the hands to frame that leg. Inhale to lengthen the spine. As we exhale, we'll start to fold forward, walking those hands alongside the leg. Your choice. You can keep the head nice and supported with the spine, nice long line from the top of your head to your tailbone. If it feels better to let your head and neck relax down, you are certainly welcome to do that, as long as it doesn't put too much strain on your cervical spine, on your neck there. Let's take three more breaths here. Slowly start to walk the hands back in towards the body. We'll take our left knee and draw it in towards the chest. That foot can stay on the inside of the right leg, or you can step it up and over, and that'll give you an extra little glute stretch there. Flexing our right toes back, we'll wrap our right arm around the top knee. Left hand reaches behind us, so we're in a twist. We'll exhale to unwind to center. If you didn't already cross your left foot over, go ahead and bring it to the outside of the right leg. And we'll keep that cross and let our left knee fall open. So we're in kind of that figure four shape, and we truly are a four with the legs here. And just make sure that left ankle bone is on top of your right knee so it's not digging into your kneecap there. And then I'm gonna give you lots of options from here. You can just bring the hands behind you and sit up straight and tall. You can also fold forward here. If this is feeling good on the hips, with the hands behind you, just take a little bend into your right knee. You might just be coming up onto the heel, or maybe you can plant that foot. If you're feeling okay there, you can also walk that foot in or bring the hips forward. So you're really folding yourself up. Stay nice and open through the heart. You can also add a gentle, very small rock side to side. It's like doing that cradle the baby pose where you hold onto your leg just without having to use your arms. All right, we're gonna very carefully come out of this. For me, it's usually easier to move my booty back and then help that leg along again. And then we'll uncross our left leg. Shake out that leg a little bit. It's been a long time bent. All right, doing those on the other side. Our left leg stays long, right knee bends in. Find the hamstring stretch first, keeping the hands to frame that left leg. As you inhale to lengthen the spine, exhaling hands, walk down alongside that leg. And relaxing here, if it feels okay to let the head and neck go, you can do that. You're reconnect with your breath here. Let something go with each exhale. Slowly start to walk the hands back in towards the body. And we'll take that twist first, so drawing the right knee in towards the chest. And that foot can stay on the inside of your twist, or you can step it over right away. Staying active through the left leg, flexing the toes back. We'll wrap left arm around the top knee, right hand to the floor behind us.
And we'll exhale to unwind. If the foot wasn't already crossed, go ahead and cross it. And we'll let that right knee fall open. And make sure your ankle's above that knee so you're not pressing onto your knee. And listen to your body. It doesn't have to be the same as the first side. You can stay right here or start to bend that left knee any amount. Maybe planting the foot. Maybe fold yourself up as much as you want to. Try to stay open through the heart wherever you are, though. Maybe add a tiny little sway side to side. And carefully start to come out of it. However, you can safely take that left leg along again, uncross the right, shake them out a little bit. And we'll start to, let's just keep both legs long for now. Let's give the knees a break. Bringing the hands alongside the body, inhaling the shoulders down the back. As we exhale, we'll walk those hands down alongside the legs. If you've got a strap or anything else you'd like to hook around the feet, you can bring those to the feet. Just have something to hold on to. And just like we do with the individual legs, you can have that nice straight spine from the top of your head to your tailbone. If you would rather just melt down into this forward fold, let everything hang loose, you can do that as well. well. Let's find a nice sinking breath here. As we inhale, see if you can lengthen the spine a little bit more, even if the head's relaxed. Exhale, try to melt the heart down towards the knees. Three more full breaths here. Slowly start to walk the hands back in towards the body. And from here, we'll bend through the knees. And I'm going to give you a few options. I think I was saying if you join me a little late, I hurt my neck, so I think I can only do option number one on this one, which is a great one anyway. The hands can face in any direction. You're springing the hands a little bit behind you, rolling the shoulders down the back, lifting through the head. You can lift it a lot more than I am right now. You can stay right there. If you want other versions of this pose, the fingers want to point the same way as the toes, and you can lift up into a reverse tabletop, and you can let the head fall back. I'm choosing not to do that today. Or you can do that with your legs long and just ooh, lift those hips. So either version, again, I'm going to stay right here with the hips down. You do whatever feels right on your body. If you let the head fall back, start by tucking the chin, then lower those hips down. Take a moment, circle through the wrists. And then scooching up towards the top of your mat and keep those knees bent, holding on behind the legs. We'll lower all the way back down. Hugging the knees in towards the chest as you get there. Rock side to side. Massage the low back after that back bend. And we'll start to take both knees wide to come into happy baby pose. The hands can be on the knees. You can reach for the outside of the feet or the big toes. And add a little rock side to side. And releasing whatever grip you've got on the legs, taking longer there if you need to. We'll draw the knees in towards the chest. And then let the arms open up wide. We'll take a final twist here. Inhaling with the knees at center. As you exhale, let both knees fall over to the right side. Your knees can be staggered, stacked, crossed on top of each other, any twist that feels good on your body. And the head can stay gazing towards the ceiling, or you can turn and gaze towards the left hand. Use your next inhale to draw the knees back to center. Exhaling both knees fall over to the left side and head can stay towards the ceiling or you can turn and gaze towards the right hand with any other version of a twist your body likes here.
We'll inhale to draw the knees back to center, wrapping the arms around the legs. If there's any other final poses, postures, anything you need right now, you can reach the feet up towards the ceiling to do kind of a modified legs up the wall. If you have empty walls around your house, you can take your legs up the wall or even lean them against a chair or a couch, a desk, dining room table. Trust me, I've done it all this week. So you can stay there. You can also do a shoulder stand, plow pose, anything else you need right now to complete your practice. I'll give you all kind of a minute there. I know I can't see any of you, but that's okay. Do whatever you need. If you're ready to start on Shavasana, it'll be a little bit shorter than my normal 10 minute Shavasana. It'll be more like four minutes today. But I encourage you to try to stay, stay on your mat for Shavasana or you know, if you move somewhere else, do those legs of the wall or anything like that. But that is the hardest pose to do at your own home, in your home practice. So really commit yourself to just settle in for this last minute or so. Allow your eyes to close. And try to let go of anything else you feel like you need to be doing around your house. Give yourself permission to be still and do nothing for these last couple of minutes. Slowly start to reawaken your body, bringing small movements back into the hands and feet, circling through the wrists, circling through the ankles. On your next inhale, come back to that full body stretch, reaching the legs long, arms up over the head. Exhaling to draw the knees in towards the chest, wrapping the arms around the legs. Give yourself a big hug. Thanking yourself for taking this time out of your day to make it onto your mat to take care of you. Whenever you feel ready, rolling completely over to either side, taking as much time as you need there. And we'll eventually all meet up back in any comfortable seated position. We'll bring our palms together, bringing our hands to our forehead, to our third eye, as a reminder to have clear and loving thoughts, bringing our hands to our lips, as a reminder to have clear and loving words, and to our heart, to always have clear and loving intentions. Thank you all so much for practicing with me today. Namaste.